Hello and welcome back. This is episode 61, Imperative to Functional. And today we're going to look at um, what an imperative pattern would look like um, and then how we could solve or remove that pattern um, to use applicatives instead. And I apologize as it is a uh, cold season here in Tennessee, uh, or at least for me. So, um, uh, so this is uh, this is some code that we have, um, and we've got this prop function. Um, and this prop function basically takes a key and an object, and it just returns the key from the object. <clears throat> so what we would say is that this prop function takes a string, which is the key. Um, although really we're not enforcing that, but work with me here. And then uh, and then we're, we're, we've got an object, and then basically we're going to return some type. Um, which is the value of whatever the property is at that key. Um, or we're going to return undefined because, you know, everything in JavaScript is basically a dynamic dictionary lookup, which is evidenced by being able to write this sort of function. Um, and so one of the things that we want to do, um, let's say we want to take, given some object, we want to get a person. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say, all right, the first is going to be get the first name prop from the object. And if we don't have a first, then we're going to return undefined. So what this immediately tells us is this get person, um, if we were to define what the um, signature for this would be, um, it would be something like, um, given an object, then we're going to return you a person or an undefined. Uh, and here, undefined, just another word for null, basically, right? So. Um, we're going to, if, if not first, then we're going to return undefined. Then we're going to get the last. And it's a very, very imperative going through here. We're going to get the last, which is the prop last name from the object. And if uh, last isn't there, then we're going to return undefined. And if both of those things match, then we're going to return uh, an object, which has first and last properties rather than first name, last name. Um, and so if we, if we have this input of, of this object, and we pass that into get person with the input, then we get read evidence. So this is this works. This is what we wanted to do. Um, and if we passed in, you know, first nay or whatever, if there was a typo or something like that, we would get undefined. And so um, this is a very common pattern uh, that I see a lot. And um, the good news is is that we can actually remove this sort of stuff. In this case, does it look too bad? No, we've only got two of them. It's not bad. But what if you had six or seven? You get this exact same code over and over again uh, is one issue. Another issue is that if you, um, if you, were, if you were to pass something into this, um, there's no reason to try to do the first name first and the last name second. Like both of these are acting on an object, that object isn't changing. So really we could do both of these in parallel, assuming our language allowed it. And the way that this imperative code is written, that's not possible because the, what's going to happen is this line's going to run and then this line's going to run and then this line's going to run, maybe, you know, assuming that this return hasn't happened, etc. So we've got in our code already the concept of something existing or not existing. And then we've got this concept of we need multiple things to both exist, you know, multiple things to all exist to be able to return something. And if any of them don't exist, then we can't return anything. As it turns out, that's exactly what applicatives can do for us. Um, so I'm going to take a little bit of a departure. I'm going to start using Sanctuary, or at least for this one, I'm going to use Sanctuary. It's just a little bit more of an opinionated version of Ramda. And by that, I mean, it solves similar problems to Ramda. Um, but it does it, it's a little bit more disciplined in what it does, and I want to start introducing some of that idea. So, um, Sanctuary, I'm going to preface it with an S rather than an R, but, you know, whatever. Like, we, we, we're all friends here. We know that we know that this is doesn't really matter. But anyway, I'm going to do it at S just to make sure so we know that it's Sanctuary rather than if you were to do this, try to put in Ramda. Some of the, some of the, the functions are a little different. Um, but it's the same concept. So now what we could do is we could have a person function that takes a first name or a first and a last and it returns this object, first, last, right? Very, very similar to what we're doing here, but we don't have any of this kind of stuff. Um, we haven't embedded the fact that the only way to create a person is to pull the prop 
a first name from something else. See, this is also tied to whatever the input thing is. So it's really get person from some specific type of object that has first name, last name props. And in this case, what we're doing is we're saying, no, 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 to create a person, we're going to curry, we're going to curry the function, but basically give me a first and a last, give me two arguments, and I'm going to return you this new thing. So I can say person read Evans, and it returns me an object. This object looks identical to this object. Uh, now the difference being, in this case, I could say person, and I could pass an undefined, and that would cause problems. But what we want to do is we want to also deal with this concept of this, this kind of this parsing thing to get from one property on one object to a different property on our return object. So we're going to revisit that prop function. And then rather than just saying object prop and being done with it and having to deal with undefined, which doesn't compose, what we want to do is if that object prop is truthy, then we'll return just that value. Um, else we're going to return nothing. And so this is very similar to the Ram to Fantasy Maybe, but as it turns out, uh, Maybe is included within the base library of Sanctuary, so that's kind of cool. And here's where the applicatives come in. So what we're able to do now that we have this safe prop, we're able to, and I'm going to use input down here, which is just the same input here, the idea being that I can't cheat this way, right? It's the same input, so the same input's going to work. So now what I can do is I can lift that person function. So this person was just a regular function that knew nothing about uh, maybes or undefines or any other kind of context, any other any other applicative, because that's what we're talking about now. When we're lifting, we're in the world of applicatives. Um, so it knows nothing about any of that. It's just like, hey, give me two values. As, as we proved right here, just give me two values, and I'll spit those things back out. Safe prop, though, says, okay, well, if you're going to deal with safe prop, now we're in the land of maybes. Well, because I can't say... Because I can't pass a maybe to this person to get what I want here. Um, what we can do is we can call lift2. Well, why do we call lift2? Well, the same reason we call curry2. Because it's a two-argument function and JavaScript is not a uh, language that automatically curries functions. So we call curry2 so that person becomes not a function that takes two arguments, but a function that when supplied an argument will return another function that when supplied an argument will return this object. And now we have this curried, we can call it just regular, like you would expect here. We could also call person and pass, you know, uh, we could do person, you know, we could do const read something equals person read, and that would still work. And now we would get a function that when we called uh, read something Evans, we would now get person read Evans. So we could do it either way. You get this for free when you do this curry too. So now that we have that, we can then lift that person function in this case, and we can pass. Now this person function can accept maybes because maybe is an applicative. And so when we actually run that through, now what we get is we get this maybe, and we see that because first name and last name both existed on input, the value of this maybe is a just here. And the value um, is an object that has first and last, and it's read and Evans, and that just works. Now, if we were to misspell this or look for something that didn't exist, we would get a maybe, and in this case, we'd get nothing. So it's a very, very similar concept, but rather than, but, but we get a few really awesome things that may not be obvious. First thing, um, because applicatives do not imply any sequential ordering, uh, this could be optimized by something at some point to actually do both of these things in parallel, um, which we would never get at this level. The second big thing that we get, and it may not be obvious when I first go through it because we're just talking about the concept of something existing or not existing, basically null checking, but what we get here, this person function written exactly the way it's written, and this function, written exactly the way that it's written, as far as lifting that person, this safe prop, right now we're dealing with whether this prop exists or it doesn't exist. But there's tons of other things that are applicatives. So this could be the result of going and doing some external computation with a future or a promise or anything else that you have that might um, you know, implement uh, or, or be an applicative. 
So we could go off and uh, we could say, this is what we want for the person, but to get the first name, first I've got to go check Google for something. And to get the last name, I got to check Amazon for something, right? And those could be external calls that could both happen in parallel, asynchronous calls coming back. This still works. Now the result of Lyft and that, the result of this, if we were to move from uh, from maybe to a future or something would not be a maybe, it'd be a future. But this code would work exactly the way that it's written. If safe prop had to somehow, rather than returning a maybe, return to future, this would still, this function would not change at all because we're lifted to a point we're dealing with anything that'll be an applicative. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, this is imperative to functional. So if you're writing a bunch of code like this, there's an easier way um, to keep you from having to deal with just the fact of something being undefined. You could also then for free, you get the concept of any of these values passed to this function it could come from some future. Um, it could come from some IO, some task. There's all sorts of different things that are applicatives and you using lift here, you're not uh, forcing yourself to be tied to one specific applicative. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and I uh, hope to see you soon.